Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. And I'm very honored to be given an, such an opportunity to speak on the topic of Japanese fashion from kimono to kobe garçon in Toronto. I am Akiko Fukai, director and chief curator of the Kyoto Costume Institute. Before starting on today's main subject, I'd like to briefly introduce the Kyoto Costume Institute, where I've been working as a curator for over 30 years. <laughs> we at the Kyoto Costume Institute, or KCI, for decades have been committed to and researching historical Western costume and contemporary works of fashion, and we are based in Kyoto. Why Western clothes and why we are in Kyoto, you might ask. As you perhaps know, Kyoto was the ancient capital and cultural center of Japan for more than a thousand years and it was situated at the heart of the Japan clothing tradition. Kyoto's clothing industry acknowledged the kimono as an, as an art form and operated under that consumption for centuries. When Japanese converted from wearing kimonos on a daily basis to the habit of wearing western clothing, Kyoto looked with new respect on the entire concept and development of clothing. Therefore, it made perfect sense that the first fashion institution in Japan should be established in Kyoto. The Kyoto Costume Institute was founded in April 1978. Now, our collection comprises over 12,000 costume items as well as the related items of Western clothing in which one can detect the roots of modern Japanese fashion. The collection dates from the early 17th century up to the present. This is a very special one. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. And you see the 19th century and the 18th centuries. The contemporary arm of the collection consists of important works of world famous designers. Naturally, the collection also includes numerous pieces from Japanese designers who have been active since the 1970s, such as Isemiyake, Yoji Yamamoto, and Baker Kubo of Konde Garçon. Japanese fashion design has had a growing influence on world style from the last decade of the 20th century up to the present. Avant-garde creations by Japanese designers have challenged and changed existing, existing concept of clothing. Our latest exhibition, Future Beauty, 30 Years of Japanese Fashion, is foundation of persevering research on this core collection. Before that, oh, KCI staged fashion exhibition. Oh, this is a future beauty show in London. Before that, KCI staged fashion exhibitions in Japan and overseas. Our exhibitions have featured a wide variety of themes and different periods of, of history. KCI's exhibition has been invited to show in many museums around the world, <coughs> including Paris, New York, London, and others, but not yet in Canada. <laughs> in addition, KCI produced publication to facilitate the access to our collection. And of course, you can access by internet our collection too. One of KCI's publications entitled Fashion, like this one, is uh, out in 10 different languages. So now, I'd like to go on today's main subject, from kimono to kombi garçon, looking into the essence of Japanese fashion with a focus on its relation to traditional aesthetic values of Japan. 
when I say Japanese fashion, you probably have some preconceived images of what that means, but I suggest that what comes to mind varies greatly depending on the direction to which you belong. Steve Jobs used to wear Issey Miyake's bright cardinal sweater. <laughs> Mrs. Obama wore Junior Watanabe's cardigan. And Lady Kawakubo's dresses are popular, though they sometimes arose much controversy. And Yoji Yamamoto's garments are in favor with German artists. However, for the younger generation, Japan is undoubtedly the kingdom of manga and kawaii or cute. Both manga and kawaii are elements of so-called cool Japan, which has captured a lot of international attention. The outfit worn by this young girl, a star dubbed the Lolita look, has a strong integral relationship with manga characters and it's a unique Tokyo street star that the world is watching. In the dazed and confused, an edgy English magazine picked up this image on the cover of its December 2012 issue. The dress worn by a Japanese pop singer, Carrie Pan Pan. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> The very famous pop singer is uh, the work of a young designer, Yoshikazu Yamagata, whose brand name is Rito Nastawas. Yamagata's work supports clothing as a mean of a communication and designs clothing to interact with other mediums. The results are both an eclectic and playful, a larger than life or a grown vision of kawaii combined with a slightly ironic twist. Incidentally, I have to point out that kawaii fashion does not necessarily permeate every corner of Japanese society. Plain and basic clothing offered at extremely low prices by labels such as Uniqlo are very are also very popular in Japan. Even so, kawaii fashion can be ignored since it is absolutely unique to Japan. Fashion in Japan these days does not differ on the whole from other big cities in the world. You will see luxury fashion brands shops everywhere, including <coughs> Japanese fashion brands. And of course, less classy brands such as Zara, H&M, or Gap and Uniqlo. However, Tokyo Street Star represents one of the starkly unique face of Tokyo fashion now. Now, you may ask, but what is going on with traditional clothing or kimono? The answer is that we don't see kimono much in everyday life these days. Kimono have come to be an apparel reserved for special occasions such as wedding, tea ceremonies, graduation ceremonies, and other days, etc. Recently, casual kimono, koto yukata, and even second hand kimono have taken on the cache of cool costume among the younger generations. Even so, it is undoubtedly that kimono will regain the status and predominance it must enjoy in Japan. I'd like to briefly just, uh, I'd like to review just briefly the process of how Japanese converted from wearing the kimono into wearing Western clothing. From, from the time Japan Kova forcibly opened in 1854, Japanese were required to confront and examine Western systems and culture. Almost from the start, Western outfits were adapted by men. <coughs> there are some rare exceptions among upper-class ladies who are women with 
advanced ideas, but for the most part, the kimono was still very rare. Women's clothing remained longer in the traditional vein of kimono. However, the Western manner of wearing clothing steadily took root in Japan. After World War II, defeat meant that things had to change dramatically and drastically, and people, women included, were anxious to fit into the new system. From that time, and particularly once the Japanese economic expansion of the 1960s had begun, the Japanese fashion industry really took off. The new professional fashion designer drew people's attention. In the 1970s, Japanese designers' name gained renown in the Western world, led by Kenzo Takada, Kanae Mori, and Issey Miyake. Then, in 1980s, Japanese designers jolted the world fashion scene. But we will come back to this topic later again. Before that, let's look at the other side of the coin and see how the kimono had impacted Western fashion since the latter half of the 19th century. A full century before modern Japanese design made a splash in the 1980s, Japanese clothes and kimono had already exerted a profound influence on Western fashion. The occasion for Japan's emergence from two centuries of nearly complete seclusion from the outside world was the arrival of American condor Matthew Perry's black suit in Elway in 1853. Of course, Japan was not unknown in the Western world before that. But the opening of Japan in 1854 to Western trade brought about vast increases in quantity of art of objects exported from Japan to Europe and America. Japanese for the influence of Japanese art and culture on the Western world in the latter half of the 19th century began to flourish. A broad public awareness of Japanese art was advanced by the avant-garde artists of that time, such as, such as Edward Manet, Claude Monet, Vincent van Gogh, James McNeil, Osra, and many others. Of course, there are so many things to say about Japanese in the painting by these by this artists, the most well-known influence being that of Ukiyo-e prints. However, today, we are going to keep our focus on kimono. So, let's take a look at this painting. Lords and Silver, the Princess from the Land of Hosu. The, the, the Japanese object, the pants, screen, and flag, as well as kimono, play a central role in this painting. And we have many such paintings where the kimono is used as the things to wear, in another words, more or less, as it was intended with the models pretending to be princes or the princesses from the land of Hosu. In these paintings, the kimono is still used as an item of clothing. However, as the painting revealed, <coughs> the kimono was used in a distinctive, distinctly Western manner, resembling a dressing gown. As seen in this painting, Madame Elio by Pierre Auguste Renoir, the kimono is one of the white figure of silk in Japanese rinzu, decorated in vivid shade of red orange, blue, green, and gold. It is one of the type typically worn by black ladies among the upper class samurai families during the, the late Edo period. However, in this painting, she has some simply done a kimono over her, her orange dress and has belted both in a relaxed European style. 
many examples of this type of kimono resided in the museums in the US and Europe today. As this slide shows, kimono were also used as decorative clothes or a tablecloth. In the then here you see kimono that are used as a background of the painting. On your right is a posterized arrangement in gray and black number one portrait of the artist mother. The kimono is somewhat different to spot. But now you can see that the background of left part with the fora motif is Obviously, kimono of the type typically in the late Edo period. You may already know that the kimono as clothing completely differs in shapes, shape and construction from Western dress. Kimono is an assemblage of rectangular pieces which can be folded completely cut and regular when not being worn. The infinite complexity of the material surely attractive and inspired painters, and it is also quite possible that the kimono suggested the notion of flatness in painting itself to Western artists. Kimono in Western paintings gradually metamorphosed into a colorful and flat space or a decorative plane rather than the depicted object of clothing. As the decorative plane is shifted to the background of paintings, it visually established a flat construction. When the kimono melted into the background of the paintings, as epitomized ect by Gustav Klimt's expectation, European painting found an entirely new mode of vision, visual expression that would, that would gradually freed from the kind of realism, decorativeness. However, I can't go further on this topic because I need to return to the subject of fashion. <laughs> and here we have yet another question. Though the kimono appears often in painting, did it also ultimately have an impact on the Western fashion? As we have already seen in August Renoir's paintings, Madame Elio, kimono were used as dressing gown. And the word kimono came into general use in the Western world with the meaning of a dressing gown from the beginning of the 20th century after the meaning of Japanese clothing. We know many examples from very elegant kimono made in Japan for Western market to ordinary and cheap one made in France. <laughs> <laughs> However, the first Japanese image appearing on the Paris fashion scene can be, uh, can be traced back a bit further and many have debuted at the Paris Universal Exhibition in 1867. Three Japanese women were sent on a mission to the exhibition in that they must have caused quite a stir. At the very least, many Western people suddenly encountered for the first time as an aspect of real man in, the, in a limited sense. This illustration of Paris Universal Exhibition in 1867 67 shows the first appearance of Japanese women in the Western world and the first appearance in the, in the Paris fashion magazine as well. One interesting example of the fashion magazine of the time where this frame is to be found at the Musée de Chateau de Compiègne, the nearby Paris. The cake or visit of Princess Mathilde, cousin of the Napoleon III of France. It is said to be made of fabric, which was a gift from Akitake Tokugawa 
Yagna Glara, uh, the last Japanese shogun and leader of the first governmental delegation of Japanese <coughs> to the Universal <coughs> Exhibition in Paris in 1867. It is also conceivable that the cape was designed by Charles Frederick Ward, the founder of Paris Auditorium. From this inception, Japanese influence on Paris fashion developed. First, there was an obvious interest in Japanese textile. Fashionable Paris dress, dresses and coats were made from kimono fabrics. In this case, a kimono wa was unstitched, then cut and repieced into a fashionable outfit of the time. In the Japanese, the very famous Paris auditor uh, Auditorier transformed kimono fabric into a play dress. Maison Walt produced a gorgeous evening dress of linen silk with a Japanese model. Here, Japanese taste in textile was adapted to the real silk fabric. From, from then into the 1920s, Japanese motif can be observed in textiles employed by Poiré, Coco Chanel, and Edouard Morillon, and even today. The second influence Japanese kimono had on Parisian fashion, we can find in the kimono silhouette adapted to the Western dress. Most examples of this are found in the years from 1907 to 1914. Representative works can be seen in the design of Popoire, Gustave Bleuer, and Carol Sisters in the Jean Pacan as well, and many others. And I, I, I show you the modern one. <laughs> <laughs> the third, and perhaps the most significant way in which the kimono impacted Parisian fashion is in the, the adaptation of cross cutting. Kimono as clothing completely differed in shape and construction from Western dress. As I already mentioned, kimono is an assemblage of rectangular pieces in contrast to the construction of Western clothing, which is uh, which is employed carved line and dots. Madeleine Bionet, you know, the very famous fantasy designer, had an enormous influence on 20th century fashion through her innovative ideas on method of cutting. Her early works, created after 1918 to 1920s, feature flat construction. This wedding gown is in 1922, is the most remarkable example of flat construction and has the effectiveness of the obi sash as well. Bione did not use any curve line, it did not use any curve lines in her works. Instead, she cooperates the principle of the kimono into the structural aspect of Western style clothing. We know that before Bione became an independent designer, she worked with the Carroll sisters. One of the sisters was a friend of Edmond de Goncourt, an active advocate of the late 19th century Japanese movement in Paris. In this environment, Bione encountered a variety of things Japanese, and she was known to be a collector of ukiyo-e prints and kimono. Some of ukiyo-e she acquired can be seen on the wall of her atelier in this photo from 1925. As seen in this fashionable dress from 1925, the Victorian cut and construction 
at G are symmetric. And here, the looseness of the cut is controlled so that the form of the moving body within becomes completely abstract. So now, I return to my previous question. Did Kimono influence Western culture? And my answer is resounding yes. However, the kimono worn for hundreds of years and up to the 1930s in Japan gave into Western clothing or the emblematic clothing of so-called modernization. <coughs> Since the 1950s, the kimono has, has all, all but disappeared from daily life in Japan. In the 1970s, coinciding with the growth of Japanese economy, Kenzo Takara was acclaimed by the Paris fashion scene, and Hanai Mori was received as a member of Paris Auditor. Isemiyake was another name quickly recognized in the Western world. However, Japanese innovators rarely jolted the world of fashion in the early 1980s. Japanese designers, Rei Kawakubo of Kondi Yarson and Yoshi Yamamoto made their first debut in 1981. One year later, they caused a stir with garments that appeared to be an endorsement of Chinese. It was the polar opposite of the concept of beauty in the Western fashion, and it shot overseas and triggered intense debate. Their work embodies concepts of Japanese beauty vastly different from those of earlier images. The clothes, clothes created by Kawakubo and Yamamoto had pause in the public, while the public itself hung slowly, resulting in a shape and silhouette that was far from the beautiful in the traditional sense. First of all, both Designers initially deliberately rejected colors, using instead only shading to suggest coloration in the austere nuance between black and white, as if in play of shadows. When a woman put on one of this garment, her feminine form disappeared, while the kimono also disguised her women's fear, simplifying it into a weary column. These items of clothing allowed maximum freedom within their accommodating shapes. Many were simply unable to comprehend these designs. However, a significant number of people <coughs> recognized that these designs represented a new type of beauty and realized that they, they were challenging the new, the narrow value the fashion has embraced to the date. Their baggy and asymmetrical clothing, which seemed from a Western perspective to lack or defy the notion of shape, was described as looking like the remnant of clothing after a bomb had exploded, <laughs> which of course <coughs> had somber and negative overtone then. Because of the frequent use of black and gray shade, the style was also nicknamed the crow. Japanese clothing stood in stark contrast to the beautiful silhouette and the color of Western clothing at the time, and the tra traditional notion of femininity. Sometimes, that the lab picker, the garment nonetheless, keep a high, higher quality or visible luxury. Japanese fashion effectively varied the stereotypical view of femininity. Instead of using frills or embroidery or decorate a garment, fabric was selected through a rigorous process in which the designer focused on the properties of the fabric to emphasize its inherent beauty, much in the way a kimono does. Fabric is an absolutely essential element in the de delivering a new fashion. 
and the journey design were well lost in this through their knowledge and understanding of kimono culture. These designers already had their own ideas for fabric when embarking on the design. Kawakubo once said, I spent 80 percent energy of creation for the fabrics when I started to make clothes. In the Isemiyake began searching for unique fabric for his clothing during the 1970s when he launched his career and he traveled in search of textile from every re region in Japan. He collaborated with outstanding textile designers such as Mahiko Minagawa and Junichi Arai as Kawakubo did with Hiroshi Matsushita to develop, develop the textile to be used for creating their unique product. <coughs> this focus on fabrics is continued by the younger generation of Japanese designers. Consequently, Japanese fashion is born at the crossroad of the designer's creativity and Japanese tradition together with the cutting-edge technology, which was informed by and developed by from this tradition. Evolved. Let's, let's come back in the 1980s. In the mid-80s, Japanese designers' clothes infiltrated the US and Europe. Japanese designers during this time had a cutting HP. Through Japanese fashion design, people discovered or responded to an aesthetic that lay beyond the boundary to the to traditional Western aesthetic. At the same time, this clothes gave a new meaning to the act of wearing and initiated a reexamination of the relationship between clothing, femininity, and physicality. When the boundary between art and fashion had been shaken at the last decade of the 20th century, Japanese fashion drew international strong attention of art critics and curators. The spirit behind such Japanese design fashion was basically adapted by Marta Magera and other designers during 1990s in their deconstructed design and Japanese fashion continued to build a major influence on designers' own art. Meanwhile, back in the late 1990s, a separate branch of fashion emerged. emerged. High school students began converging in the street in Harajuku or Sibiya district of Tokyo to show off their unique outfit, mainly inspired by the heroes and heroines in manga and anime. Tokyo street style has, in fact, attracted frequent media attention within Japan since the 1960s. It wasn't until the late 1990s, however, that it garnered international attention <coughs> and Tokyo gained a reputation as a center of street fashion. Meanwhile, Japanese manga and anime infiltrated and enthralled younger generation in the Western world. Cosplay or costume play, which involved involve the uh, dressing up in, uh, in the costumes to represent characters in the popular media now attract views and swap. Among such fashions, the Lolita look is the most popular one. The Lolita fashion obviously takes its name from Vladimir Nabokov's well-known novel Lolita, but the hyper-exaggerated versions of the style <coughs> draws on other historical references to Rococo and Victorian fashion, for example, along with cute element or element we call kawaii. 
the Japanese word kawaii means some, something young or immature or something that because of its small size, for example, makes one want to, to treat it with care and adoration. From this original meaning, kawaii has developed in recent years into a more so specific adjective used to describe a certain cool sensibility. Now, you know quite a bit about Japanese fashion and why I realized the future beauty 30 years of Japanese fashion in which I tried to survey Japanese fashion comprehensively from the early 1980s to the present. So now, let me explain briefly about, about it. This is the first <coughs> scary edition about Japanese fashion, originally held at the Garden Art Gallery in London, then toured six cities and will tour one more museum in Australia. The exhibition is arranged into four sections, defining fashion from Japan. The first section, in place of shadows, examines the designer's collective devotion to a monochrome palette and the power of black. Flatness <laughs> section explores the simple geometries and interplay of flatness and volume in the work of Japanese designers. Tradition and innovation highlights Lifestyle <coughs> invention of materials and form. While Kuji Pana makes explicit the relationship between high fashion and street fashion, the first section in Fred of Shadow takes inspiration <coughs> from similar text of the same name written by Japanese author Junichiro Tanizaki. This section reveals an enduring enjoying the interest in the more chromatic palette, as well as the nuanced texture and form prevalent in contemporary Japanese fashion. The design paved the way for the rise of minimalism in the 1980s with emphasis on black color. <coughs> this section features legendary pieces from the 1980s by Deika Kuro and Yuji Yamamoto as well as the works by the younger generation. This garment, Riddles with Horse, appeared in the Washington, Washington Post. The style was soon dubbed rap pickup. However, the reporter did not fail to notice that the design was painstakingly cut and finished in stylized. The flatness section explores simple geometries and interplays of flatness and volume in the works of Japanese designers. Kawa, Lee Kawafu Kondegyarsson's recent work conveys her growing interest in the relationship between flatness and form. This coded uh, to be completely flat. So this is uh, Isemiyaki's pleated evening coat. And this cartoon appeared in the New York University. <laughs> Themes through Western eyes, holding such as Isemiyaki's, it allows a maximum range of movement within its accommodating shape, is sometimes perceived as unstructured at best and, and at worst, Virgin on the wrinkle was strange. <laughs> Yet to the Japanese, the superfluous space between the garment and the body, referred to as ma, is more than simply a void. It is a rich space that possesses an incalculable energy. Mm -hmm. In tradition and innovation, in this section, the relationship between tradition and innovation is considered. We survey clothing from the radical reinvention of traditional Japanese garments and techniques such as kimono, 
to the technological advances in textile fabrication and treatment. This section includes Koji, Koji Tatsuno, the funny one, that one, <laughs> and uh, uh, Julia Watanabe, blue and uh, red and yellow one. Uh, tech, uh, Julia Watanabe's seminal technological collection and conveyor song sensational Kajimoto dress were bump dress, as well as clothing were used by a technique of kimono Of all her creations, Kawaku bought 1997 series bump dress, best summer car design and design aesthetic. The double layered stretch nylon creations have a number of parts on the back, shoulders, <coughs> abdomen, and hip filled with down and foam curious lumps and bumps. The clothes are like two layers of skin that blur the boundary between body and garment, fusing them into one. When the wearer moves, body and garment together create intriguing and predictable shapes. The series titled Dress Meet Body, Body Meet Dress, inspired viewers' imagination and it prompted American choreographer Mark Cunningham to create this fascinating new dance work scenario. The uh, Japanese has, over the centuries, developed an ex uh, exquisite sophisticated textile industry. In order to compete with new fashion from the West, synthetic manufacturers have inherited the dedication to high quality that was characteristic of artisans who once created kimonos. It helps to recognize that the high quality kimono can cost as much as a new car and occasionally a house. <laughs> Asian had to excel to the highest degree in order to command such prices. Japanese fashion designers have collaborated in the development of the designer's materials from the choice of the thread at the very beginning of the manufacturing process to the com completion of the garment. This luxury Nishijin textile ori originally for Obi sashes. This is a tra uh, traditional kimono where clothing is adapted to the modern clothing. And I'll, I'll show you another one. Is, uh, this ensemble of matol, the coat is one of the very old shibori technique. Uh, called Tsujigahana by famous Japanese uh, Kyodo Atoriko. In, in our show's final section, we focus on so called foolish fun. Like this. <laughs> the exhibition was extremely well received. And I hope the visitors might feel one more attention to the Japanese aesthetics and notion to contemporary fashion. So now, I'd like to bring my talk to a close. After we are at this exhibition, I finally came to the conclusion, which I look totally natural and reasonable, such as Japanese fashion sense produced art, which is at the same time wearable. It is the same kind of mental approach found in creation of the kimono, the essence of wearing art. Since in the traditional culture, Japanese have virtually no clear boundary between decorative art and pure art. Then, Japanese fashion designers 
bring the same sensibility and passion to making dresses that the ancient brought to making a kimono. It is true that kimono is not seen in everyday life, but it remains in our modern calling culture in this world. Thank you so much for your time and patience. you, but I'm desperate to see future beauty, even if I have to go to Australia. <laughs> and I definitely want to go to Japan, and I definitely want to go to the Kyoto Costume Institute. I'm so much better informed as a result of your wonderful talk, uh, Mr. Pai. Thank you so much for coming to see us here at the Textile Museum of Canada. We are very, very honored to have you with us here tonight and have you in Toronto, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon, and not only here in the city, but here at the museum. We look forward to many collaborations with you and with the KCI Church. Thank you. I'd also I'd like, like to thank once again, again uh, tonight, tonight our uh, sponsors, uh, and uh, 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 the Craig from Japan, Japan, and Malaysia, so it's very great to teach you too. Uh, to the executive director, director, director of Mr. Tashida, here, the director of Chicho Kornos, who's been thinking about that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to, to uh, the progress of Mr. Tashida, who's also back back home. home. And also to our other special guests tonight, Mr. Tashida Namura, the vice consul of the Fair, from the Consul General of Canada and the United States. Thank you very much for coming this evening. And finally, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Without you, it might not have been possible, because without your support, 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 support um, we wouldn't be the, we wouldn't be such a wonderful house. So, so please, please do come, come and see our Geisha Deep Exhibition, if you have already seen it. Please come back and support the exhibition, and have your museum in general, and we will talk about the community here, here, many, many, many times in the future. And please do join us in this next now, now, for a glass of wine. To chat, 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 chat,